Hello and welcome by the Arcade Saga. My name is Ilkian Wiesma and today I think I have another uh, nice video for you guys because we are uh, doing another care collab and personally I really like the care collabs. Uh, for example because uh, we there are different growers who are uh, all growing in their own uh, media and their own setup and some might uh, look kind of the same but it's always a little bit different. Um, Sometimes it's very different. Uh, I think uh, the three of us, I'm going to uh, mention the other two uh, in, a, in a second, uh, we all uh, grow mostly inorganically. Um, so we are uh, pretty close there, but our climates are uh, not the same. Uh, so that's another uh, different uh, as well. So that's uh, one of, uh, of a few things that I really like at the uh, Care Collapse. Uh, that was a rooster, uh, probably you probably hear it in the, in the background. Um, but yeah, before I continue this uh, care collab, um, I first would like to mention the other participants for this, this uh, video, this care collab. First of all, we have Karen's Argots, and second, we have uh, Nina from Ninja Argots. And uh, as you see, uh, myself. If you do, didn't know that uh, already, I am from the Netherlands, so that uh, probably gives you a little bit of idea uh, of the climate, what I uh, just um, talked about a little briefly in the intro. Um, and also, I like to grow my orchids in self-watering setup. So I, uh, yeah, I only use inorganic media. I stopped using uh, organic media for about three years ago. And I really, really love uh, self-watering. It really suits my lifestyle. And I think the orchids are doing uh, pretty well. There are always a few, I think, especially when you have a collection for, I have 325 plants at the moment, something around that. There are always a few, I think, that uh, could do uh, a little bit better. But it's only a handful, so maybe five, six that could do a little bit better, and the rest is uh, doing uh, fairly well. So I think the, the setup is really uh, suiting me and my orchids. But today we're going to talk about a very beautiful, uh, beautiful orchid. And I will turn uh, the camera a little bit. It's a very bright day today, so we have a lot of uh, backlight coming from this window. But we are going to talk about the orchid, and it's right out of screen, I can see, uh, but next to me. So I will change the camera angle a little bit because I want to show you something that is uh, probably important for this uh, video, for this care collab. So I'm going to go uh, around the camera and I'm not trying to make, I'm sorry, I, that was my tripod, to make you guys dizzy, but I'm going to move the arcus, uh, the arcus, the camera. <laughs> and you can see, first of all, it's going, this is the arcus we're going to talk about, but here you see something else. That's a window. And you probably noticed it, but it's opened currently. And that's very important. I will come back to that uh, when we're going to talk about the orchid. And I am going to put it over here, where is my up potting and re potting section. It's a little bit messy. I have some stuff around, but I will uh, do a close up of the plant um, on there. Uh, so I will uh, change the uh, camera setup and uh, I will be right back and we'll have a close look at the uh, the Arcus. And I know you guys, we had some information in the intro, but we are talking about the Peggy Root Carpenter today. <laughs> I know it's a bit silly, but I found it funny not to mention the uh, actual name of the Arcus. But um, <laughs> The title uh, did uh, give you uh, the clue of this care collab, I think. But uh, yeah, like I said, the Peggy Root Carpenter, I have it listed as a, a Ballara. I don't know if it's still called a Ballara, but uh, at least it's a Peggy Root uh, Carpenter. And I have potted this, this one up at the 1st of uh, November uh, last year, 2020. So I don't have it that long. Let's put a tag back and let's have a look at the Arcus. I need to turn the screen of the camera, I'm sorry. Yes, there we are again. So I can see what I'm doing here. Well, this is the plant. I think it's a quite a nice size. It's not a very old plant as we uh, just saw, but we have one new growth here. I have another one here and I have a fur fairly new growth here, which has a spike here. And yes, it has another one. So it's working on two spikes at the moment. 
And I'm sorry, Nina, I thought this one would be in bloom as well, but it isn't. Um, but it, that's okay. I thought I probably would have it in bloom uh, when I would uh, make this video, but it isn't yet. But it uh, doesn't matter. I think and uh, Nina, her plant is in bloom and probably Karen's as well. I'm not completely sure, but I will check her their videos out and we will see. But um, let me adjust the camera a little bit. I mentioned uh, in the intro the window as well, because I think what happened here, I don't know if you already saw it, but this bud is brown. So yeah, this one is um, failing. It will stop growing, it will not make a flower. Luckily, the other ones are beautiful green colored, but I think uh, that this one had a little bit uh, of a cold snap uh, about, I think one week ago when I did forget to close the window. So therefore I mentioned the window in the, uh, in the uh, intro, you saw that this one is the closest position next to the window. So it had a little bit of a cold draft uh, in, in the, uh, at night and it didn't like it. And I think that's why this, this bot is uh, dropping or almost dropping. But luckily the rest is still okay. So I think we will be fine. And of, of course we have another, uh, new spike here as well, a secondary spike. So we will have some blooms because the blooms are really, really pretty. Beautiful uh, purple uh, color, uh, a light color, but I, uh, yeah, a light uh, purple, but I think um, there are, uh, they can be kind of different, the pegarut carpenters. Not all flowers do look the same, but uh, they all are the pegarut uh, carpenter. But um, yeah, I think that's kind of nice, but it's sadly, that this one is not in flower yet, so we, you could uh, compare the flowers with one another. And I'm sorry, I think I have quite some big light in that mirror there, um, because our uh, I will adjust the camera just a little bit because it's very annoying. Uh, let me reposition this, and we'll be back. So I hope this is uh, better. I apologize, we are still wor working, uh, reconstructing the house, remodeling. So I have my uh, mirror here, <laughs> otherwise uh, but we're still working on the bedroom as well. So uh, that's why I now use my orchid room uh, temporarily for um, doing my hair and brushing my teeth and uh, etc. But anyhow, and, and I think it uh, did give uh, quite some backlight reflecting from the back because it's straight uh, across the room. Uh, from that window that we saw earlier, so um, that is giving the uh, back backlight there. But I think it's uh, better now. Okay, so like I said, I grow this uh, self-watering. So let's have a look at what in, is in the pot because I like to use the transparent pots. So we can have a there goes the tag. We can have a look inside the pot, and I see a lot of beautiful roots. I hope you can recognize the media, but it's um, pumice. And I even have some Cintiq in the bottom of the pot, but I have the larger and the smaller Cintiq. Uh, sorry, the uh, pumice and, and some Cintiq. And it looks like this one is really enjoying uh, this setup. Look at that, we have a beautiful roots there as well. And here, so this one is going really well. So that's what is happening uh, currently in a pot. I'm really happy about it. So I like to uh, take these brown leaves off whenever I see them appearing because they can start some rotting in a pot sometimes or some mold and we don't want the mold. And I don't have the mold now. So that's good as well. So, so far I'm pretty happy. The only thing that is happening as you may already notice is that this one is a really pushing the side of the pot, this new growth, as does this one. So I have to up pot this um, pretty soon, I think around the end of the year, when this one starts new um, new growths and new roots, I will uh, do an up potting. Even though I will repot it in the same setup, so I probably could do it now, but I just want to wait because um, we have already one bud blasting and probably if I'm going to repot it now, the others may go as well, or at least a few of them. Um, what I'd like to do with you guys as well is show my uh, my uh, customized self-watering setup like I uh, 
li like a how um, how I like to call it. That was uh, the sentence that I uh, was trying to put out. But um, because this is what I do every three months, and you probably you may have noticed already, but for the new ones, and I think this is very important. So therefore, I include it quite often. And on the other hand, this is a care collab. And this is how I give care to my orchid. What I do, I uh, do not or rarely flush in cell watering. I know everyone is talking about the flushing and yes, it's uh, very good, but it didn't, uh, I have too many orchids, I just cannot flush. And that is how I start um, not flushing and try to think about what's happening. How can I make it uh, healthy for the plant and healthy for my schedule? <laughs> so that's the basic of my, uh, my, my setup. But what I do every three months is I measure the pH of the water that is still in, uh, in, in that reservoir and the parts per million. The, uh, what will happen after about five, six months, at least in my case, if you don't flush, is that the pH in the pot will go down and can go down very rapidly and much. I had one that was around 3.8 pH and it did lose all the roots. So it's very important to keep an eye on that if you don't flush, especially if you don't flush. Let's put it like that. So I will uh, measure it and I will show you uh, the results in a, in a second. And this is uh, going to be a very nice example because it's uh, too low. And um, let me show it to you guys. This is uh, five to six. So let's say uh, 5.3, around 5.3. That's, uh, that's too low for my liking. I like to have it uh, around seven, uh, between seven, 7.5. So I will adjust it in a, in a second. I will rinse this on the tap very quickly, so I can uh, put it back in the in that pot. And now we're going to have, have a look at the parts per million, if it's much or much or not, and it's very very low. So that's good, but it means that this one is really eating its feet. Oh, I'm sorry, I just. Turned it off. I thought I had a hold button. Um, that was a hold button. Let's have a look. 24. 24 parts per million. That's very low. I feed this one around, uh, in summer, around 80 and 100 parts per million. Sometimes it's very, uh, when it's very beautiful weather and they have a lot of my orchids are growing, new growths, I will go up to. Uh, let's say 135 as a max, but mostly let's say I like to keep it around a hundred. In winter, I go down a little bit, depending on the weather, of course, but I let, yeah, generally speaking in winter, I go around um, 50 parts per million up to 80, sometimes, sometimes 30 if I think I gave feed them enough. So basically what I'm saying, I try to keep it at the lower end, but this is very low. So this one uh, could have some more dinner and that's what I like to see. So that's okay. But as we saw before the part per million was that the uh, pH was too low. So what I do to get that pH right again, as where I like it, like I said, around seven, is I use this. This is um, similar for the ones from America, uh, the Garden Line. It's a calcium based product, a powder. And I try to open this. There we go. And you need to have that gray one, gray colored one. And what I do, I just grab a scoop of this around, um, let's say, a, a little less than half of this little scoop. I don't know how much it is. It's, yeah, this, no, it's not even a teaspoon, just a little bit. It's. Yeah, I think you need to measure it and get the hang of it. It's very uh, hard to describe how much it is. But um, I use this calcium powder and it's um, sold for organic growing uh, growers to keep the media longer um, well for your orchids. 
basically it's the same process your if your organic media is going down it starts to get acidic so a low ph and to keep this ph up they use this stuff so i have thought well if it use uh, if it works for inorganic maybe it works for uh, i'm sorry for organic maybe it works for inorganic as well and for me it does like i said every three months normally i check this adjust it and i do this for two years now and it really really works well so what i do is just pull this put it in the reservoir and that's it and now the ph is uh, starting to go up i did a lot of measurements to check it and we can do that while we're here why not we are here so we had five what 5.3 i did say it was a little less than 5.3 but let's say 5.3 and we're going to have another look while we edit and i will put put it on hold and we already are at seven whoops 7.7 7. that's fairly high but uh, I must admit uh, this one needs uh, a watering again so it's a bit low so it's fairly high but that's that's okay it was uh, getting too close too low I could have put in a little less of that calcium powder but it happens um, more often so it's not uh, not a big problem when it's a little bit too high you better can have it too high than too low way too high is not good as well so above eight is too high um, my uh, spot is like i said uh, around seven or seven point five so what i will do i will measure this uh, tomorrow again that is um, too late for this video but i uh, i will adjust it if it's too high let's say it's uh, above uh, eight uh, i just pour some water out put some next one in stir it again and measure it again if it then stays around seven seven point five it's okay so sometimes it happens i just had a little bit too much in it but it's not the end of the world but keeping it in a too low of ph yes that will cost you your little roots so that's not a, a good idea here's my tag so this is basically uh, what i give it care wise temperatures um this one is uh, really liking uh, some some brighter um brighter uh, lights not not direct sunlight i i don't have an orchid that, that receives direct sunlight i just don't don't do it i don't think they need it even my vendors they have bright light but not di direct sunlight i just uh, like i said i don't do that but uh, this one uh, really enjoys some light uh it's also um yeah intermediate grower to a little bit highlight i think and temperatures is um yeah sweet spot i think 20 to 25 degrees something like that but i have it in winter at night at 18 and it uh, did well it grew well and it's uh, working on new growth a beautiful root so i can take 18 degrees uh, at night i think even a bit cooler would be uh, okay but i like to have my orchid room and my greenhouse around 18 so i'm not completely sure um if it uh, can get a bit colder but probably it will be uh, be okay so i did put my uh, uh peggy root carpenter back at the shelf uh, again uh very close to the window but today it's a very nice uh day we have i hope this will get in focus oh it's very dark let me turn the camera a little bit yes there we are 25 degrees as you can see and we have an immunity of well it's now 62 it was 60 <laughs> but um I like uh, the humidity around 60-65%. But uh, these days it was a little bit higher because it was very uh, damp and wet uh, weather we had. So yeah, then it's uh, quite high, but I don't like that. Like I said, the sweet spot for me is uh, 60 uh, to 65% humidity. And it really likes, uh, as probably every orchid, uh, air movement. So I have now the window open. I will turn on the ventilators. Uh, in a minute when I'm done filming because they make quite some noise so yeah that's thinking I think that's uh, that's it for uh, for this let me yeah I, I think I covered everything if I didn't or you have any questions please feel free to ask them in the comment section and I promise you guys I will uh, answer them as quickly as I can
Um, so yeah, thank you for watching. And if you like this, please uh, consider subscribing to my channel if you like this. And uh, for now, uh, I only can hope to see you at one of my next videos. Bye bye.